How's it going? I'm going to do a review today on a bag I've acquired. I'm going to use it as my day hike uh, utility bag. It's from the best made company. I uh, have a not very secret addiction to their products. I browse the site. All the things I find really desirable. I know they're very expensive and I know some people might think, well, you could get that for a lot cheaper or something that's the same thing, but um, I'm, I'm definitely sold on, on the quality of their stuff and I'm pretty sure this, like their pot, and like their elk skin gloves, is going to last me a long, long time. Um, this is the Canvas Ditty Band. It's a, um, just a single, single bivy of um, a waxed canvas. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I've got some specs here. What is it? Uh, $124 it costs plus shipping. It's uh, 16 inches tall and uh, eight and a half inches across the bottom. It's um, got a brass hook here, so that's made of brass. It's a brass, brass kind of snap hook there. It's got a very, very positive snap with a really, really high, high quality spring in there. And then these are brass grommets here. Uh, the rope's been uh, hand whipped and spliced with this. Um, and it's been uh, that red control line's been wrapped around after it loops through the through the bronze um, through the, yeah, the the brass sorry uh, bronze rather bronze brass. There is a great difference between the two metals, but their names are very similar. Between the bronze um, hook, so that shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. That's very very tightly coiled. That red stuff there. Uh, the bag can be worn. Uh, I, I sort of struggle to envisage, envisage it in my head um, when I first got it. Um, the bag can be worn. Using, you separate just the shoulder strap. You could have it sort of a university style, university student style, just around your, around your hip here, which is fine. You can still attach something to the hook if you were keen. Um, you see people get around with, um, you could, I could attach my, my drink bottle or something perhaps, uh, or just something a bit smaller. Or you just have that and just push it down a bit and then you can't even really notice it. So that's one way to carry it. Um, when I'm going walking I like it to be held a bit closer to me so that's where you can swivel uh, this loop through and there's an attachment at the bottom here. You can thread that through and then it makes a small but very capable strap to put over your head there like that. And so now the bag just sits on my back like that. It's really well, really well made. Um, it just feels quality. The canvas is thick and strong, and the stitching is very positive um, on each of the um, on, on the seam that's going around the bottom here. It's um, definitely not going on, going anywhere. When I got it, I was a bit, um, I th it was a bit lighter than I thought it would be. But then I realised that they let you do the waxing yourself. So what you get inside the bag is a tin of this Martexan um, general wax. Um, and so what I did yesterday, it was a 48 degree Celsius day yesterday, so I sat out in the sun with my tin of wax open, exposed to the sun. And yeah, I did end up using about a whole tin, but I put a, put a latex glove on and um, just smeared literally uh, the wax uh, across the bag and then just kneaded it in and in and in over and over again. I spent about half an hour doing it, agitating the fabric a bit. And um, now, yeah, water really does bead off of it and it just feels a lot more... Um, not waxy, but it feels a lot more, um, it's got a sort of a, a stiffer or um, yeah, a bit more of a, a sturdy quality to it now since I did that. So uh, these tins of wax are $5, so uh, even if I have to do that every year, it was quite enjoyable anyway. So, so that's the main, um, that's the main sort of look of the bag. It's a little best made X on the, on the side there and it carries comfortably enough. I mean, it is just a rope strap, but it's a very small bag. This has got my um, day hike loadout in it which um, is the second part of the video I think I'll go into anyway. So, um, but as, as on the whole, at $124, sure, you could get bags with compartments and pockets and everything like that, but it's definitely not a small bag. It's, it's the size of a good, good shopping bag um, size. It's, it opens all the way out and um, I could fit a fair bit more stuff in there. Like it's, I've only got it about sort of two thirds of the way full and it does me for a day hike myself and I could pack more stuff in if I wanted to take my kids or something, and um, it wouldn't be an issue at all. So um, yeah, if you if you don't mind getting um, yeah, paying a little bit more, um, I think this is a great looking uh, and really practical bag. But that's another reason I got it because I like the look. I like my 
I don't like the tactical um, expedition backpacks and things like that. I love Frost River backpacks and companies like that, but with a more um, old timey look. And um, even though I know you sacrifice a bit of practicality, those expedition bags are highly high quality and highly practical. But I like myself to have. I fancy myself, you know, to have a bit more of a um, an old fashioned, a bit more of an eye catching um, eye catching item. If I don't say so myself. I'm just going to turn this off, I'll switch over to a different view and then we'll go through what I take with me on one of my day hikes when I'm going by myself. And we're back. Um, so as I said, I'll just go through what I take with me on a, uh, on a day hike. I used to like this around in a little black wool, one of those ultralight, um, really thin nylon bags. But, um, but since I got this one and since um, one of the zips on the black wool stopped working, um, this is the one I'll be using, and it all fits in the same size package. Not as organised, obviously it's just the one, one pocket, but um, here we go. So to start with, when I go hiking, um, I go with the assumption, and I know it's silly to assume, because anything could happen, but I'm not a survivalist, I'm not a hardcore survivalist, but I go with uh, the things that I would need to enjoy myself. Um, I haven't actually got the food in the bag now, because I used it on my last hike, and I wasn't going to load it up with food, but I'll describe the food that I would eat um, as I come to the cooking stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the, these are things that I would just be able to have a comfortable and enjoyable day walk with, and if push came to shove, I could probably make a shelter in, in the current conditions, which are really, really hot um, Australian uh, scrubland. So as I said, 48 degrees yesterday, um, the main concern is going to be water, which I do, I, I do cater for in this, in this loadout. So. Um, here we go. Well, to start off with, I've just got my uh, EDC pouch in it. That's got, um, that's the same as it always has been. I think I've swapped from Leatherman Micro for Leatherman, Leatherman Style, um, Leatherman Style CS. Um, it's got a lighter, it's got a um, mini torch, it's got a Sandman U 710, it's got a sewing kit in it now. I see there's a couple of different things. It's got some cable ties, it's got um, a heavy duty carabiner. Um, which is more for if I'm with my dog, so I can um, tie the husky up to something because she just runs away. You know, Labrador sits by me nicely, but husky just, she just rocks off, unfortunately. Um, well, yeah. uh, then I've got um, first cutting tool and just my primary, just a Mora um, slash light, my fire, fire knife, has your second means of starting a fire, um, which is the, um, the uh, spark, <laughs> the fire's still there on the back of the blade, so um, I think I've done a, this was part of my more overall video I did uh, a few months back, so that's a, it's a very good knife, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't hold that shiny surface, Oops, sorry about the wall, it doesn't hold that shiny surface that Mora's done, it does, it's a cloudier sort of steel, but it's uh, still ferocious and sharp and um, very high quality, so that's the um, first cutting tool, uh, speaking of water, I've got my um, Got my bag and my um, soya squeeze water filter kit, and the syringe that uh, comes with it. So I haven't done a review on this. There's a few of them out there already that really pretty much say the same thing. This soya water filter turns brown river water into clean drinking water. So um, do I really need to say much more than that? It cleans the water, makes sure you won't get sick from drinking it. Only thing it doesn't do is if you're going to Bali or somewhere where where there's viruses in the water. It doesn't get rid of viruses, but this gets rid of all the bacteria and parasites and things like that. So, um, Australian um, bushwalkers, it weighs nothing as well. This is just like a plastic tube. Australian bushwalkers should all carry this. It's fantastic. You can just scoop water out of a filthy hole with your clean canteen and put it in the, this is how I do it, and you put it in the bag. You can sort of hold the bag under water, but I find it's better if you just open it up, pour in, and then, um, jam through the filter back into the canteen. So there you go, I take my, that's my water, my first option of water. And the second option is the clean canteen, which um, I use the S5, I usually either put it onto my belt, or maybe I'll put it around the strap. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I carry for my cooking, I've got just a stowaway. Uh, I was looking, I like my best made pot, but I might use it more for car candy. This thing's just too practical. This is excellent. So I've got my stowaway pot and my Little, um, little mini stove, which is all set up and packed up in its little thing. Um, just bears, the, bears itself on top of the gas cylinder and doesn't have a stand or anything like that. It just sits on the gas cylinder. 
So that's that, and this is yeah, great folding, great folding kit pen, hot thing, very good. Um, locks back down like that, and of course, um, if I was going in a, in a colder conditions where I'd be making fire rather than using gas, um, I'd be filling with tinder as well, kindling. Uh, but on these summer walks, fire band season and whatnot, carry a, um, a thing of um, propane. Propane? Yeah, propane. Butane and propane, whatever. The um, little gas, um, gas stove, gas. So that's my cooking done. And um, I like to just take with me some tea bags and some um, yogurt top muesli bar things. Uh, maybe a protein bar um, if I'm feeling particularly, um, you know, erring on the side of caution. And, uh, and then just some two minute noodles. I love those Indomie two minute noodles, they're the best. Um, my second cutting tool, I've been hoisting around. I've been trying to make more uses for this little Bransfors Brux uh, hatchet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's um, especially when it's in company with the um, like your little leatherman wood saw or something. You can get some little, get some fun little whittling tasks done and have yourself a good little time. So that's so that's my second cutting tool, little knife. And then um, carry a um, this is a Maglite XL two hundred. It's pretty no frills, um, very high intensity flashlight. I think it's about, I don't think it's 200 lumens, I think that's misleading. I think it's about 180 lumens. It's got a few settings on the back. It takes uh, three AA batteries. It just has a really long battery life and it's uh, indestructible. It's a great mag light, um, aluminium, sort of real solid, sturdy feel. Um, the caps on the back, I don't know if you like them or not. It's, it is easy to set it off the back, sit it in your bag. Um, sometimes, so it's not the best light in the world, but it's one I have in a tank with me and maybe lose. I do prefer a headlamp, which I'd be wearing if I have around my neck while I was hiking. Uh, I'm going to take the Leatherman rebar, just for um, just more, if any, like really the only things I generally use it for. But an essential task nonetheless is um, navigating that cook pot when it's on top of the stove and um, using all those hot parts and things. So it applies, puts a, bit of a few inches between yourself and the, and the heat source. And the wood saw could come in handy, and I suppose the knife is a backup blade. Um, the awl, perhaps, if you're really going to sit, sit down and make an ocarina or something. But um, I just carry it because I like to have a little bit on me all the time. And uh, then the last thing is, um, and this is probably the only sort of shelter type item, you just have one, a very, very lightweight folding rain jacket. Because even on these stinking hot, hot days, it can, you can sometimes get weird little rains and stuff. But it's got a few other applications. It's quite large, so I could. I could use, use it with a power cord in this pack and just make myself a little shelter or something like that. But yeah, the, the main, um, your main enemy in these, in Australia, in, in my area anyway, is um, running out of water rather than shelter because there's always a big tree to sit under. It's um, just a matter of finding water nearby to drink. So that's why I like this gear around um, and this gear around. And that's sort of the focus of everything. So yeah, that's my basic hiking loadout. Um, if you have any suggestions, things that I could take that could maybe fit into the top of this bag? I know people are going to say mini tarp and things like that, and that's cool. I probably will end up getting a mini tarp, but if you think of anything else, I'm always about learning. I love me some learning. Um, again, thanks very much for watching. It's been a while since my last uh, video, probably a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your continued, um, continued viewership. See you later.